Um, I think we have a great representation here. Um, I think throughout the process, it's it's about everybody's voice being heard. This opportunity has been a very inclusive process. We have a variety of stakeholders in my particular group. The uh, process that we've used has been intense and um, taken extremely seriously by, by many, many folks. To ensure our students are better prepared for today's world, a number of states have adopted new and more rigorous content standards for college and career readiness in math and English language arts and literacy. Of course, with new standards also comes the need for new assessments so we can accurately measure student progress against these standards. Today, a number of states and territories, including North Dakota, have worked together to develop these assessments. Collectively, this group is the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium. As part of these assessments, new achievement levels are also required to determine what score indicates a student is on track and what score signals a student needs help. The Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium recently set these achievement levels through an inclusive and collaborative process to ensure assessments are based on fair and mutually agreed upon expectations for students. This is very much the culminating event of four years of very hard work by all of our member states to build this, this uh, new assessment aligned to uh, uh, new standards, uh, expecting much more of our students so that they can be college and career ready uh, as they exit high school. We're going to have an instrument that will truly gauge what our students know and are able to do and we can make informed decisions regarding enhancing their education moving forward. Whether it's data, whether it's the online panel, whether it's our own table groups or whether it's the entire room um, at our particular grade level, we're all working together. We know that we need to move forward, we know that we need to raise the bar, we know that we need to prepare our students for an ever-changing world. That's what this is all about. Uh, that's what these assessments are all about as well. Achievement level setting was a weeks-long process that included teachers and administrators, higher education faculty, community and business leaders, parents and others. There's certainly a, a variety of uh, levels of expertise here. Even in my small group, uh, we have business leaders, we have uh, middle school, we have expertise from high school. The process is designed to bring people together to uh, derive a common understanding of what it means for students to be uh, ready for colleges and career. Through a series of online and in-person activities, expertise and opinions were solicited utilizing the well-tested bookmarking technique. In the end, four achievement levels were set for each grade in each content area. This is how the process worked. The online panel was the first wave of the achievement level setting process. Open to all who have a stake in public education, this step allowed educators, parents, and other concerned citizens to have unprecedented input on student achievement levels. Thousands of interested parties reviewed test questions online and recommended achievement levels for students to be considered on track for college or careers. Over two weeks, people from across the U.S. took the time to make recommendations. Every Smarter Balanced member state was represented in the online panel. The in-person panel was an intensive seven-day collaboration of hundreds of state-nominated teachers and administrators, higher education faculty, community and business leaders, and parents. I was impressed by the amount of people here that have very um, specific and advanced content knowledge uh, in the English language arts as well as in mathematics subjects and uh, the, the, the level of dialogue um, that's on, you know, ongoing within the, the setting is very professional. They participated in grade level panels to deliberate and recommend threshold scores to define four achievement levels for every assessment across every grade and content area. The in-person panel included a diverse cross-section of teachers. All Smarter Balanced states were represented on the in-person panels for math and English language arts. We're able to bring the background of um, other grade levels and other experiences, um, even working with people who are ELL or special ed and being able to bring their experiences into our discussion as we talk about um, the leveling and where those thresholds need to be. Teaching Native Americans um, is 
a joy that I've been given for 23 years. And working with this population, they are unique in many ways. So it's essential to have a voice of all of the people as this conference has did. For the first two and a half days, high school achievement levels were deliberated. Then, achievement levels for grades six through eight were deliberated for another two and a half days. And for the final two and a half days, achievement levels for elementary school grades were discussed. So each step I feel more and more confident about the information we're looking at and knowing too that it wasn't just a quick decision, but this was a thoughtful decision um, where experts, teachers, and um, content experts from around the states are contributing. At the end of the seven days, the in-person panels concluded with collaboratively agreed upon achievement level recommendations. This is a, a collective group of all of the states that are participating in the Smarter Balance Assessment getting together and trying to come to some, maybe not consensus, but at least some common ground. As an English teacher and both a social studies teacher, I think that uh, we're, we've always been standards driven. I've always had high expectations for students and I feel that they can perform to these standards with scaffolding and facilitation from teachers, so I welcome these standards. The cross-grade review committee was comprised of representatives from each of the in-person panels. The cross-grade review ensured that student scores reflect reasonable student progression from grade to grade. They made clear that the achievement levels didn't just represent what was necessary for a student to complete one grade, but ensured that students would have what it takes to thrive in the next. The percentage of students having to take remediation is really overwhelming. and. Um, so it's really critical that we have these discussions um, between the 11th grade teachers and the colleges. These recommendations are crucial to aligning exactly what we are supposed to be teaching with what they are actually testing to get really good quality information on the achievement of our students. With the panels and cross-grade review wrapped up and achievement level recommendations in hand, an independent technical advisory committee and expert auditor certified that the process followed the plan approved by member states. Finally, chief state school officers used additional information about students' knowledge of mathematics and English language arts and the degree to which students demonstrate that they are ready for a variety of options after high school to approve levels that were grounded in the recommendations from the panels. But there's one more step. The achievement level recommendations are now in the hands of states and territories and subject to their specific approval processes. Moving forward with the new levels, teachers, students, and parents will be better prepared to work together to address areas for improvement and make sure student needs are met. The ultimate goal? ensuring that all students are on track to succeed after high school.